Election by itself cannot bring change, as I have said. An election is just a ritual uh, because uh, the whole process of the election is controlled by one candidate. Uh, it cannot, it cannot, you know, in any way uh, be the avenue to cause change. And that's why uh, we, uh, we, we, we are conducting a campaign of um, nonviolent um, civil disobedience. Um, where protest, you know, ordinary people to assert themselves and say this is unacceptable. And we protest against this in all ways, uh, to peacefully protest, which is also a right, obviously, um, enshrined in our constitution. Um, uh, it, it has taken a bit of time because we are functioning in a, a, a regime of terror where people have been cowed for many years. So we've been going through a period of empowerment, um, giving them information and um, um, empowering them to understand that this is their country and they will not um, benefit from, it, from its resources and its uh, uh, opportunities unless they assert themselves. Um, and that no, you know, freedom does not come freely. You have to work for it. And um, happily, you know, um, I think that realization uh, has now happened. Um, we have, you can see the energy amongst the people in spite of the frightening, uh, 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 you know, deployments that are you know, out there with the ugly looking machines uh, of, uh, you know, um, AMA, um, you know, AMA, AMA, AMA vehicles and uh, machine guns and, um, you know, and riot gears of all kinds. People are assertive, are saying, well, we are fed up. Simply understand that we are fed up. And they beat them and tomorrow they come back. So. I uh, reckon that um, uh, through this avenue of people asserting themselves directly through protest uh, will lead uh, to either uh, some form of a dialogue process uh, with the regime uh, to then peacefully uh, agree on um, a reform process that will lead to a transition, or if the regime is completely intransigent, then I can um, uh, foresee a situation where the public, um, uh, the, 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 you know, the public strength of protest will be so strong as to overwhelm the regime as a whole um, and, um, and uh, have, you know, some kind of um, a revolution. Uh, frankly, our hope would be not to get there because getting there leads to some other complications. What would be uh, reasonable um, is for the regime to realize that, um, you know, its time is up and that to take cognizance of people's demands and to realize that people are really determined uh, to have the changes they, 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 they need and deserve. And therefore, to come around and negotiate an exit and a transition to a truly democratic dispensation. That would be the, the, the preferred way uh, as we see it. And this transition obviously would end with uh, having a transparent and credible elections uh, that whoever wins would then come into government. One of the safeguards that had been attempted in the constitution of Uganda that was promulgated in 1995 was to have presidential term limits. Um, the Constitution provided that a president ca can be elected for a term of five years and 
after that term, if re-elected, would serve a second and last term. No president would serve more than two terms. And that was um, a very useful um, 